What's up, Fresh Baked? Hey, Jeff. <laughs> How did I know you'd be first here? <laughs> He's always first. Jeff is always first. How are you always first, Jeff? Every time. That reminds me, whatever happened to the NSA in terms of, they don't say NSA anymore. I mean, they're still there. This is still a robust organization of fresh-baked, loving fans, which we love the NSA. There's Angelica Obradovich, currently NSA member of the month, as I understand it. Uh, but yeah, I don't hear, I don't see the NSA in the comments anymore. Just saying. Uh, good to see you, Jeff. Good to see you, Angelica. It's just me, myself tonight. Guys, thank you. Um, myself a little coffee, missing my wife. She's out hanging out with her sister, doing I don't know what, taking it easy. So anyway, what I want to talk about tonight, you guys, is... I, I, well, I couldn't really put it in the title. The title says, How to Teach Disneyland. What's up, Porkins? Hey, Larry. Uh, the title of the video is How to Teach Disneyland. <clears throat> Excuse me. But what I mean by that is, like, if you're bringing a new person to the park, a, a young person, let's say they're, you know, their first ever to Disneyland, how do you, what, what, what would you advise for a new person, a new follower of Disneyland, a new devotee to Disneyland? How would you shepherd them through the garden of Disneyland? Uh, baby girl is to November 4th, though it sounds like we may be earlier than that. Actually, uh, we're, um, we got a video coming up tomorrow, maybe tonight even, maybe, probably tomorrow on Royal Dorks. We got an update for you guys on Royal Dorks. We just put a fun video of our baby moon, our baby moon uh, to the desert this past weekend. We had a great time. The video was really fun. Uh, it was a cute little video that we did. And uh, we got another video coming up. That's going to be a full update on what's happening, our current state of babiness, and uh, you'll get all caught up. Uh, we're probably going to, hopefully, we may start doing a few more videos with, or videos with a little more frequency on, on Royal Dorks now that as we get closer to the baby coming along. So you can subscribe to that Royal Dorks through our uh, main channel page or in the links. Not to this. Uh... Evan, are you in orange? Oh, wait, are we having lunch? Evan, are we having lunch this weekend? Because, um, <laughs> yeah, somebody said they want to they want a drunk live stream with me. Uh, that would be cool. We have to figure out where to go because I'm, oh, no, we're going, Evan, do you mind Tango Road Terrace? Just put that out there because I got a thing I got to do for a video. Uh, I would never forget. <laughs> Oh, I mean, Stephen Crawford gives us. I got a lot on my plate, man. Stephen Crawford gives us with ten bucks. Thank you very much, Stephen. He says, "Would do just like Walt. Start on the train, then to the Opera House, then walk up Main Street, teaching all the history along the way." Uh, fair point, Stephen. I would say that walking in Walt's footsteps is a great way to bring in uh, a, a new devotee to, to Disneyland. Uh, skipping maybe you know the e-tickets or. Uh, you know, things like that. I, that's, that's probably the way I would do it. I would take a Walt perspective. I would, I would want to try to do the rides that have been there for 60 years, that kind of thing. No, Laramie, I am <laughs> not busy at all. No, not at all. Just, you know, running a couple of YouTube channels, having a baby, having two jo another job. Um, and uh, yeah, raising a family and all that stuff. It's, it's easy. No big deal at all. Uh, okay. Do you have a favorite video of Fresh Bake that I referenced for the upcoming Christmas season? You know, I, it goes back a long way, but I once again, I'm reminded of the uh, limited time magic, which would have been 2012, 2013. I don't know. I couldn't link you. Liz is doing well. She's out hanging out with her sister. She's not, she's not here because she's tired or anything like that. Uh, she's just hanging out with her sister. We got a $20 gift from Ryan Gordon. Thank you very much, Ryan. We met Ryan uh, a couple weeks ago. He was great hanging out with you guys. Loved meeting you guys. 
Uh, Ryan Gordon says, teach at what age? Because that will greatly vary the experience you want to provide them with. Did I miss that part? No, I didn't say at what age, which is a fair point because kids have a different approach to Disneyland than adults would, let's say. An adult, I might want to say, go more Walt with an adult, whereas with a kid, I might try dark rides. I think I might start with dark rides. I would point them to Fantasyland first and then let the kids, you know, don't take them to, don't take them to Tomorrowland. You know what? That's good advice for either group, um, be that an adult or a child that you're bringing to Disneyland for the first time. Tomorrowland first. Uh, I like Fantasyland. Let them feel, because I think Fantasyland, Main Street, Fantasyland, and New Orleans Square are the three best ways for a kid to feel the kind of idea of what's happening thematically. That, 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 that hug that you get from Disneyland. Those are the areas where you get hugged the most. I am breaking bad. That's tonight? I swear I need a personal assistant. That's tonight? On Netflix? I need... Boy. Ron, uh, I need a television watching schedule also. Uh, I think that I would take my... I would take a kid... But the first place I'd take a kid is to Fantasyland. 12 a.m. night. Okay, is that 12 a.m. Pacific or 12 a.m. Eastern? Uh, I would take a kid to Fantasyland first. And then, actually, second, I would take them... Tom Sawyer's Island. I would take them to Tom Sawyer's Island, or, or actually, maybe even better, take them uh, on the Martin around the river first, let them see the island, then take them to the island. Ooh, that's good, right? That's good. So I got to wait till midnight to see, to see El Camino? Huh. I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, did you know they took down the background at Toontown? Yes, I did know that. And we're going to be going there this weekend to discuss and to view that. I was just kidding, Ron. <laughs> but thanks for being there for me, buddy. <laughs> there are so many things. I have. I, it's been a difficult week for me this week just to keep up on what's going on with Disney. Uh, I have just been so, like... I've been down the rabbit hole with all kinds of non-Disney stuff this last week or two. Uh, if, you, um, if you're aware of what's happening in the world, there's a rabbit hole out there, and I fell in it. <laughs> I fell in that rabbit hole. Oh, boy. Uh, but anyway, so there's that. So I have not been able to keep up with a lot of stuff that's been going on. Like, I've been, I, I follow on Twitter and on Instagram. People are just posting stuff all over the place, and I'm just like, what? People are having so much Disney fun out there, and I'm like, I'm like in this rabbit hole. Uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll come around. Uh, okay, so yeah, so I guess the question I'm asking you again, if you're new to, uh, if you just joined us, is how do you teach Disneyland to somebody who hasn't been to the park before? What would be your, what are your, what are your top recommendations? Uh, for initiating somebody to their first, you know, their new business to Disneyland? How, how do you approach it? Do you, do you dive right into Max Pass? Do you dive right into e-tickets? Or do you try to sort of spoon feed them? Uh, you know, you can't go wrong with the train. You really can't. <laughs> you really can't. Uh, will we be at the park this Saturday? Yes. Is Max Pass worth it? Well, yes. Uh, Max Pass is great. Um, I have no uh, arguments about whether or not MaxPass is a valuable piece of software. MaxPass is definitely a valuable piece of software. I just don't like that they charge you for it. Uh, it's, I mean, if you're going, if you're going like once a year, then uh, then yeah, ten bucks is worth it. I'll, did, or did it go up? Is it? Did it go? Up? I don't even know how much it costs right now. But then if you're a family, that's like 40 bucks, right? Or 50 bucks, who knows? There, come, there does come a point where it starts to get, oh my God, is it really 15 now? <sighs> 15 bucks, man, jeez. Okay, uh, yeah, hit the like button, please, guys, if you're watching this show, thank you very much. 
So uh, that's a lot of money. Uh, it is a lot, but uh, but uh, you know if you don't go very often, it does make a difference. Uh, we got a two dollar gift from Hunter Smith. Thank you very much, Hunter. He says teach them all about people mover and its glory. That's going to get really hard to do soon, Hunter, because we won't even have tracks to say, hey, look here, thing. That's going to not happen soon. Uh, Diana Schultz gives us what fourteen bucks. Thank you very much, Diana. She says, I think the first thing anyone needs to do is ride a train full circle no matter the age. Look, Diana and all of you have, have, have uh, suggested the train. This is, why, this is why we all are friends. <laughs> this is why you and me are here together in this current space, sharing this moment on my phone and on your computers and on your phones, watching this live stream right now because we all have a single mind, a, a hive mind, if you will, and it all starts, it all starts with the Disneyland Railroad, doesn't it? So you take them on the Disneyland Railroad and you, do, you don't even speak, right? You don't even speak. You just get on the train, take it around, and then you get off the train and you walk down Main Street casually, not in a hurry, casually, walk down Main Street through Town Square. Maybe you take a photo here and there, uh, smell the roses a little bit, go around the hub, Say hi, Walt, give him a high five, go through the castle, go through the castle, hear the music, change from Main Street into Fantasyland, go into Fantasyland, ride a bunch of dark rides, go down the trail from Big Down, Big Thunder Trail, oh boy, go down Big Thunder Trail, get on the Mark Twain, take a tour around the rivers of America, point at the island, show them the island, then take them on the island. Okay, not that far. <laughs> We've got that far. They're now on Tom Sawyer's Island. It's probably lunchtime. Where do you have lunch? Uh, where do you have lunch on your newbie at Disneyland day? Hmm. Turn it to Adventureland. Well, you could. I'm just saying, like, this is, you know, I mean, that makes sense. I, I, uh, <laughs> you should totally with me, yeah. Uh, Jolly Holiday is good, although Jolly Holiday technically is not a legacy, uh, you know, restaurant. It's not. French Market is a good choice. I would say no to the River Bell. Go broke. Uh, Cafe Orleans, eh, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. What about the uh, plaza? Huh? You take them to the plaza, get some chicken? Golden Horseshoe. I like where your head's at, Stephen. Even though they have the food there isn't great, that's another great way to initiate somebody into the history of the park. Now, hopefully, by the time you go into the Golden Horseshoe and have your lunch, have a corn dog, or well, actually, you can't get a corn dog in the Golden Horseshoe. Maybe you get one at the stage or a cafe. Maybe you bring it in. Uh, but you, you have your lunch. Hopefully, there's an act there again. Hopefully, they're, they're back, the, the, the dueling pianos. And you can tell them, there's a dueling piano here today. Back in the day, there used to be can can girls and all that kinds of stuff like that. Uh, so I like that. I like that's good. That's very classic. Tell him about how that was Walt's place. You know, he, he had his anniversary there, that kind of thing. Boy, it sounds like Rancho. Mm, Rancho, that's pretty good. Uh, it sounds like my day is more of like have a Walt Disney day than it is uh, <laughs> how to teach somebody, uh, how to teach somebody, you know, a new how to go to Disneyland. Hmm. But is that really what we're after, right? What is your goal? What is your goal when you bring a new person to Disneyland? What is your goal to inoculate them? Or is your goal to just show them a good time? That's a good question. Because we all have different perspectives, don't we? We all have different uh, like ideals on what a day at Disneyland should be like. And we're all different. And maybe, maybe they don't want to be inoculated, as it were. Where to park? <laughs> The Disney Gallery. Interesting, Ron. Interesting. Huh. You know, uh, uh, Ryan, we have had Walt Disney days before where we did only rides that were around when Walt, you know, that went, when Walt was alive. We have done that before. Yeah. But that seems like that's almost a different... Okay, Nate wants me to, <laughs> Nate says, explain about the plaque and tunnel and the significance to first timers. Yeah, I, I, I don't think you could, I think that kind of goes without saying, because you haven't done anything yet when you're walking through. 
uh, or walking into the park, there is that moment. But I also, at the same time, I don't think you want to burden a new person in the park with all kinds of like, you don't want to hit them over the head with history, 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 history. You, you got to like do it this way and, 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 and let everything soak in. It's like a child to be super excited about every single present that you open up on Christmas. Sometimes they're not that excited about that thing. Sometimes they're more excited about the box. You never know, right? So, I mean, I, but I, I think it would be difficult to skip the, the plaque as you walk through the tunnel. Uh, oh, catching up to We got Ryan Gordon gives one another six bucks. He says, uh, this is such a subjective topic. I agree, right? Because we're all different. Took my parents to the park their first time. We went on Railroad Pirates uh, and Big Thunder Mountain first. Like, you know, that, that's, a, that's a great idea, right? That's a great way to go. Uh, you, 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 oh God, I didn't even talk about pirates. In this plan of how to inoculate somebody into Disneyland, I didn't even go to think about pirates or Haunted Mansion. I might have to fire myself. It's hard. It's hard. Uh, okay, we got uh, another five dollar gift from Elliot Adams, who says, "Train once around, then go up Main Street on a vehicle." Oh, I think. You oh boy. Then counterclockwise around the hub, you'll end up Tomorrowland at sundown. Oh, I see. You're going through all the lands counterclockwise. So you're going to each land. Okay. Uh, Evan Layton. Wow, Evan Layton. Thank you very much, bud, for fifty bucks. Thank you very much. He says, uh, my goal is to let them experience Disney and let them find what it means for them. Uh, I've yet to find someone that hasn't found something that speaks to them personally. But yeah, it's usually the train. Yeah, I don't think you can go wrong. I think, I think, I do think that every trip should start with a train ride. Uh, for a newbie, if you're bringing somebody in for the first time. That, because that's something that if you're not paying attention it could take you a while to realize what you've done when you walk past the train, when you first get to the park, and you, you don't even realize that the train is there, uh, or or what you know its significance, and that you almost have to be leaving and, and or hearing the train at some point and saying, you know, oh by the way, there's a train, not even realizing that is perhaps the single most greatest piece of thing at Disneyland. So it's probably a good idea, and then that, just like Walt intended, the train ride helps you sort of set the mood, you know, uh, uh, let you kind of pick your journey as it were. Did I miss Diana Schultz? Oh boy. Let me go back. Elliot, Ryan. Di okay. Diana Schultz that, uh, gifts us for 14 bucks. Thank you very much. She says, I think everyone needs to experience Blue Bayou. My parents always told us to these kids that it was uh, for important people only. So now my husband Ryan takes me every trip because I'm important to him. Aww. By the, uh, Ryan, that's, <laughs> you guys are awesome. Uh, I, <laughs> we met Diane, also, Diana with, with Ryan uh, a few weeks ago and she was wearing a, a fresh baked shirt and I, I noticed the shirt and I said nice shirt and she lost her mind. It was so cute. I love you guys. I love you guys. I love you guys. It was so cool. I love meeting you guys that day. That was so great. That weekend, actually. Okay, we got another gift, a final gift from Disney Adventure Vlogs, who says, I heard that they announced that they will be doing an electronic fast pass near Tomorrowland. They are trying to get rid of paper fast passes. Well, they've been doing that already. There, there are no paper fast passes anymore. When you get a fast pass, does it give you, it just goes on your, yeah, I, I, they, they, they've been working on that for a while. I think that this new system is going to work. Uh, but we'll see. We're going to test it out this weekend. All right. Uh, I got to catch up. Michael DeFilippo gets us with 10 bucks. Where are the construction video updates? I missed them. Well, Michael, we took the weekend off this past weekend, last weekend. Uh, so we were only there at night this week. We were there Monday and Wednesday night. So I couldn't do any construction videos. Uh, but it, that's it. Yeah, that's all you've missed. It's just the one. We'll be back at it uh, this weekend, and you'll have a construction video on Monday this week. And there's lots to cover there. Uh, we got a $2 gift from Lee Sandoval. Uh, he says, thank you for all you do, brother. Fresh Baked Rules. Thank you, Lee. You rule. You rule, Lee. Thank you. Hello from Iowa. Hello to you, Iowa. Uh, okay. A Blue Bayou. So uh, that's an interesting. Blue Bayou, uh, yeah. 
Oh, man, that's that's a secret almost. So I don't know if I would do that on the first visit. I think I would do Blue Bayou with somebody who's maybe on their fourth or fifth visit and say, hey, okay, you think you've seen something cool? You think you've got Disneyland figured out? Let me drop this on you. So Blue Bayou is like a yeah, fourth or fifth visit type thing for me. Because you want to keep... Uh, you want, to, you want to keep the experience going, you know? That's right. That's kind of what I was talking about with, with Nate before, too. You don't want to just hit them over the head with all this stuff uh, and, and expect everything to, to sort of uh, hit them all at once. You got to, you got to sometimes you, you do have to kind of mix it up a little bit. So when you're inoculating somebody in the Disneyland, maybe you don't do all the history all at once. Maybe you, maybe you do like, you know, that the way we intro it and then take them, uh, take them, uh, you know, into the, modern times a little bit maybe to indiana jones or star tours or something like that uh we got another two dollar gift from ryan gordon thank you he says it's also a game changer now with star wars galaxy's edge you bet it is you bet uh elliot adams gets us with two bucks also says to clarify tomorrowland is best at with lights everything at disneyland is best at night pretty much everything the only thing that isn't best at night would be like uh like the parade, I think the parades are better during the day. What else? There was something else I wrote something at night that wasn't as fun. But I can't remember now. How is the ninja? He's good. He's uh, he's learning how to drive. He'll have his license here pretty soon. And uh, yeah, th things are happening for the boy. Jungle Cruise is, yeah, I would agree. Jungle Cruise is better during the day. That is definitely a daytime attraction. Do I really mean inoculate? Yeah, like like going to church, you know, like when you get inoculated at church. Do I using the word incorrectly? I usually sometimes I I think I got a better vocabulary than I do. Am I am I not using it correctly? Inoculate, like to introduce something to you know, like as a religion. Right? Yeah. Aaron, that is definitely good advice. Uh Indoctrinate, that's a good, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Indoctrinate. <laughs> An inoculation is something we can do with a child, right? With a baby? Like a, like. <laughs> I'm losing it. Okay. Uh, I got baby on the brain. You're right. <laughs> it's not a call. <laughs> but yeah, I want I want <laughs> I want a Disneyland shot. Yes, I want to take it right. Just just get it right in the veins. <laughs> and doc, I can't even. I can't even. Okay. Uh, we got to get past this, man. How am I going to do this? It's <laughs> it is gold. I agree. Okay. Where were we? Okay. So, yeah. Uh, we, we we're having lunch at the Golden Horseshoe. They maybe go around the tree and take them to uh, – it's indoctrinate gold. Uh, take them to maybe Indiana Jones. I would, I would skip the Tiki room, actually. I would skip the Tiki Room for a, a follow-up trip, I think. Well, I broke myself, Donnie, but that's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, because the Tiki Room is not something... That's not for everybody. That might be a way to turn somebody off of Disneyland, if you ask me. Same thing with Small World. I wouldn't take people on Small World first, either. I would skip that. I would save Small World for a third or, th uh, a third or fourth trip. Inoculate. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, yeah, Tracy, I was legit drunk. I wish you guys, I wish I had the camera rolling because I was doing some crazy stuff. Uh, in the playback on the video, when I was editing and I watched it in playback, I looked pretty normal, except for the part when I was laughing. But uh, I, it was, uh, I, I was, it was hilarious. It was pretty hilarious. I, I could have been there for that. But somebody had asked for that. Yeah, like a, 
a drunk live stream. And maybe we'll do that because I'm a fun drunk, you guys. I am a fun drunk. <laughs> what are the best small details in Disneyland to teach a newbie? Well, that's what we're asking. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that guy. Someone wants to know details that you would show somebody uh, at Disneyland. Not, not necessarily like the rides and attractions, but what kind of details would you show somebody on their first trip? Country Road Entertainment gets up with five bucks. He says, we love Disneyland since we live in Arizona, but uh, I'm leaving in less than a week for Disney World for my honeymoon. Can't wait to see Galaxy's Edge. I I need to see it either, man. That's going to be great. I, 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 uh, I think it would be great. Ron, that's a thing. Uh, yeah, Ron, we got to hang out. We got to do some beers or something. Uh, let's see. Walt's, well, okay, so, so details. The Little Man Treehouse thing, uh, that would, I would save that, I think. But uh, the lamp in Walt's apartment is probably good. Uh, I like that. Did I, Kenny, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me get you, Kenny. Uh, sometimes this thing scrolls so fast and I'm too busy laughing at myself to see all the super chats. Kenny Ryman gets the five bucks. I found it. You heard of this song, Let's Dance at Disneyland in 1970. I don't think I know that song, no. I do not think I know that song. Okay. Uh, Diana Schultz back again with two bucks. She says, the half red, half white light bulb. That's fun. It's kind of a, yeah, that's a simple thing that you can kind of do that one in passing as you kind of walk along and you just say, hey, look at that. That's pretty neat. Uh... <laughs> I'm still the possums on Big Thunder. You know what? I like that, Jeffrey. I like where your head's at on that because uh, one of the things that people forget when they're actually on a ride is to because there's lots of things like that in the ride, not just walking down Main Street or walking through a the details, but the, the different the the Back to the Future canoe. I like that, Donnie. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I do love those kinds of things. Uh, on, on a Disneyland ride, you know, the, the, the possums on, on uh, uh, Big Thunder Railroad. So I, I would definitely show that if we ride Big Thunder. Uh, okay, so Mike Disher gives us a two bucks. says, train and then sit at Main Street and listen. Mike, I like where you said that's definitely a worthwhile thing to do. I'm wondering, though, if that's something I would do on the first day. I don't know if I would do the first day. Maybe you do. Maybe for a little bit. Maybe you do it somewhere. For a little bit at least, right? I mean, that seems reasonable. The ducks and geese, a Friday or first day dole whip. Uh, yes, I, well, okay. Yeah, okay, so you got one treat, guys. You got one treat to give to your, your friend or your family member or your son or daughter. You have one treat, one chance at a treat on their first visit ever. What do you get them? What, what says you this is the most important thing that you can do to learn how to love at Disneyland. Do you get a churro or a fight? <laughs> There's going to be a fight. Tracy Wright gifts us with five bucks. She says, tell them to look for Hidden Mickeys. Simple and fun. Uh, that's a whole day in and of itself, Tracy. I would save Hidden Mickeys myself for a follow-up visit and say, hey, today is, is Hidden Mickey Day. Turkey leg. No, 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 no. We don't talk about turkey legs that early. <laughs> I do think, I do think it's definitely a battle between Dole Whips and Churro. Uh, I, I do think there's a battle there. Now, Ellie F says uh, Tiki or Dole Whip in the Tiki Room, which I think that's the way you do it. I think you initiate somebody into the Dole Whip by also taking the Tiki Room. But I said earlier, Tiki Room, I don't think is a first day, uh, a first day thing. So, in my mind, that means the winner is a churro. And he, I mean, yeah, that, that makes sense. The churro is first. Because you can get those anywhere. They're in every land, and there's different kinds. Uh, so, yeah, do the, do the churro. It's your first day treat, I think. First day meal, golden horseshoe. I would also accept Plaza Inn. I would also accept the French market for a first day meal. Okay. Treat is the churro. Yeah. And Funyuns. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm having fun with this. 
Uh, yeah, beignets are definitely right up there, man. But I don't know if that's the first thing. I don't know. I don't know. That, that's something like, remember how fun, you know, how much fun we had with those churros and with the Dole Whip. Let me, let me show you this thing now on this visit. Uh, we got a $5 I'll get from Dan Wynn who says, I, if I did it at Walt Disney World, I'd take, take the Skyliner. <laughs> Skyliner and let them see the views from the Skyliner. You can see all four of the park's icons. So, Dan, you didn't get the ride, did you? Uh, or did you? Let me know, Dan. Did you get the ride, Skyliner? I'm really bummed about that. I'm really bummed about the Skyliner. Because... Uh, it, it, it kind of kills any chance that we might have here, I think. I think that they're, uh, 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 well, I hope, I hope that they stick with it. I hope they, they fall through and, and make this thing work. Did I miss another one, Stephen? Uh, okay, hold on. I got you. No worries. Stephen Crawford gifts us with five bucks. He says, Dominga, Swiss Chalet Steps. Pack Mule Trail and Mine Train Remains. Well, you're really packing it there, Stephen. I would say one or two of those, but not all four. You got to save some. You got to hold some back. I wouldn't show them the Swiss the Swiss Chalet steps on the first visit. I wouldn't show them uh, the Dominguez on the first visit. I think I'd go with the Mine Train Remains because you're going to be on the Mark Twain and just sort of allude to that. All right. Okay, I gotta catch up a little more. It says he loves the color of my tie. Well, thank you, Amos. I do like to show a little color from time to time. Uh, okay, I don't. I don't know if Dan answered me. Dodger. <laughs> okay, first of all, Dodger Blue three eleven gets us ten bucks. Says Walt's apartment, Main Street, Adventureland, Ride Pirates, Haunted Mansion, Walk Back Around River. Uh, through Frontierland, walk in front of the castle, head towards Matterhorn, visit Fantasyland, ride Space Mountain, eat at the Corn Dark Cards. That is a well thought out plan, Dr. Blue. Now, uh, I agree with probably most of that. That's a pretty good plan. My apologies, Dr. Blue, for yesterday. Um, would you fire David Roberts? Or would you? <laughs> oh my God. Why did, they bring, why did they bring him back out? Why did they bring Kershaw back out? For the eighth, why, why, why not just bring in Maeda? Uh, just give Kershaw that out and then bring Maeda. I don't know. Angelica Obradovich gets us with five bucks. Thank you very much. Uh, what is the first Main Street vehicle you take them on? Omnibus? No, fire truck. Fire truck. I think it's the first one I would do. I think I would do the fire truck. Uh, Eric Vanden Ordell gets us with five bucks. Thank you very much, Eric. He says, uh, been in and out for the show. Has anyone mentioned great moments with Mr. Lincoln? Yes, a few people have. Uh, in sense of, like, they, their idea would be to take them on a Walt day. Uh, so whatever attractions were around when Walt was alive, and that would obviously include uh, great moments with Mr. Lincoln. And I think that's a good idea. Uh, but I don't know if I would do that on the first day or not. Yeah, I, I don't think that you fire up. Uh, because I mean, they've look, he won 106 games this year. That's that's good, right? Right? You still wait, Alexa, you haven't been to great moments, huh? Uh, Dee Williamson gives us the five bucks. Thank you much, Dee. She says, uh, completely off topic, but any idea why no fast pass is available for Ride and Galaxy's Edge when the, when the land first opened? They didn't want there to be a super long standby line. And whenever you bring in Fast Pass into a attraction, it makes standby long 30 minutes probably to standby. And they wanted to make that as efficient as possible. Millennium Falcon is a very efficient ride. And much like Pirates uh, or Small World, it doesn't need Fast Pass. It really doesn't. It's actually better without it. So uh, I don't. I mean, they, they built a queue. They built a fast pass queue for it, so I think it will come. But uh, I, I don't think it needs it. I really don't. 
Let's see. Uh, okay, we got a $2 gift from Kenny Ryan. So I'm going to buy the book that Bob Iger wrote. You know what? No, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just, it's not a thing that I'm into. I'm not into that. I'd rather read about history than Bob Iger. He's been on the hard sell. He's been selling that book hard. And it kind of turned me off a little bit, to be honest. Um, him appearing on, he's, he's been all over Twitter recently, hyping his book, and he's been on TV shows and, you know, hyping the book. And I, I just, I feel like that's something he should have done after he quit instead of before. I don't know. It kind of just turned me off. Finish your job, Bob. Finish your job. Do what you're here to do. Steer Disneyland in a proper direction. Then go sell your book. Uh, we got a two-dollar gift from Angelica Obradovich, who says, "What about Utopia for a kid?" Yes, I think. Uh, yeah, I think if it's a kid only, uh, don't take an adult on Utopia on your first day. Dan Wink gets us with uh, two bucks. He says he did go on the first day with. Oh, that's right. You mentioned that last week, Dan. So the Skyliner over all those parks. Uh, that must be a pretty, a pretty great thing. I think that would be pretty cool to see. Is Carrie? Did I miss one? Carrie Valdez gets with a five buck. She says, off topic, tell Liz you have the sweetest wife. And you too, of course. Well, thank you, Carrie. I will tell her that. But I know. She's super sweet. The thing about Liz uh, is that she's literally like the nicest person ever. She's nice to everybody. She loves everybody. Uh, you guys don't know how lucky I am to have somebody as, as and as cute and as understanding as my wife. She, I, I'm not an easy person to live with. I'm going to say it. I'm not. I, I have my, uh, I'm very, you know, I'm a workaholic, forget things, um, but I care a lot. I love her and I care a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I, I feel deeply about a lot of things, but I just, I just sometimes I'm tunnel vision and <laughs> I'm just like that guy. I'm that guy sometimes that has to be shepherded through life a little bit. Uh, I, it's just hard for me. And she's really understanding that so uh, uh i love liz i love her a lot hopefully she's watching hi baby i love you all right uh dd williamson says i love you guys cracking each other up on your duke of dork video yeah uh we have a hard time we have that kind of relationship where we can we bust on each other quite a bit uh and she has a, she's really understanding of that <laughs> she's gotten better too she's gotten better at getting my sense of humor because my sense of humor Sometimes I come off as uh, sarcastic, mean, unapproachable, but that's just sort of like my resting face or whatever, but I'm not really. I mean, I'm very nice and friendly. Uh, but my sense of humor is such that I like to, like, you know, I'll, I'll dig at you a little bit. I'm just having fun. If I'm not doing it, then it knows that I, I love you. Um, but, yes, yeah, so she's gotten good at that. Uh, the pool scene. <laughs> I cut out most of the pool scene. Came. <laughs> there was a whole lot more. <laughs> But that bit when she was like, yeah, why? <laughs> I was trying to fill my feet, right? I was trying to, because I kept thinking, you idiot. Why, what, what's, <laughs> so I handed her the phone and she just like a rock. She's like, <laughs> I do, Crystal. I Don't I, right? Are, am I right, Chris? Crystal, obviously you know me a little better than some of these other guys do. I have red shirt face sometimes. Um, what do you, I, what do you, I don't know, man, but I love everybody deeply in my heart. So hopefully you understand. Nathan7478 gives us a two bucks, says you need to do a David and Liz story video on dorks. Well, we, we kind of have, we've talked about it. You know what? We'll do that. We'll, we'll sit down in front of the camera and refresh everyone on our story. Uh, Stephen Crawford gets us a five bucks, says Skyliner has no AC and Tip Tracker won't ride it after the accident. Well, I don't blame them. I'm afraid of heights. Uh, and if I was to be stuck in that thing in the middle of summer for three hours and no AC, that's, I mean, that's a situation that I would never want to be in. So I, I've i heard some people suggest that Disney might, while they're offline, they might uh, retrofit some, a some AC in there. And I think that's a good idea. Crystal says, David is so sweet and kind and a very, very good soul. But yes, he does have resting mean face and he is extremely sarcastic, but I love him to pieces. Thank you, Crystal. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully, Crystal. But see, I think that uh, Crystal is like, 
like me a little bit, so you probably recognize that in others. Joe too, for that matter. Uh, I'm not, not that you're saying you have you know resting jerk face or anything like that, but the, but you're sarcastic like like I am. So we we can spot our own. <laughs> Uh, how do I feel about the Toontown walls coming down? Uh, I'm good with it, actually. I, people have been freaking out on Twitter. Uh, I don't get it. I mean, the, the walls were gross anyway, so uh, I'm fine with it. They, I mean, I wasn't married to those the, the mountains. Um, that looks kind of neat to me, actually, so I'm okay with it. Uh, Flying Brian, gift us with five bucks. Thank you very much, Flying. He says, I marvel at the quality of paint. Every time I paint something, it never turns out as nice as Disney. The landscaping also rocks. What, at the quality of paint? At the park, Brian? Is that what you mean? Uh, a Pink Parfait gets us with two bucks. Thank you very much, Pink Parfait. Snow White's Golden Apple, Party Line Phones. Ah, Party Line Phones, that's interesting. Um, other than that, while you're getting a cup of coffee, you know, it would make me sad though, taking them to there because the way that that place used to be, I don't know if I could, uh, give the, give the, the, the market house the proper respect in that sense. All right. Uh, whoever saying Skyliner is bad, does that mean you would never go skiing? I don't think they're saying it's bad. For some people, it's just scary, uh, and they and it needs it needs uh, AC. I haven't heard anybody say it's bad though. I don't. I don't think I haven't heard it. Uh, let's see. Which I think I thought I missed something, but maybe not. Have you watched the new Onward trailer yet? I have, I did. But as is often the case, whenever I see, I was kind of meh about it. I, I wasn't, it, meh. I mean, it looks cute, I guess, but it didn't blow me away, but neither did Moana. I wasn't impressed with Moana when I first saw the trailer. There was a lot of trailers that I've seen that, it, that didn't impress me and I wound up loving. So um, yeah, I'll probably like it once I see it, but it seemed all right. Okay, uh, yeah, Dan says it's a nice fight, and plus the view, man, and that's the thing. I would get over my fears of the skyline, or, or of heights, I should say. I would get over my, my fears just for the opportunity to see those views, because like Dan mentioned, you can see all four parks, all the icons from the Skyliner. I mean, how cool is that? How cool is that? Frozen 2 trailer looks good to me. All right, so we've had our, we've had our initial tour. We've taken us all the way to Golden Horseshoe. We've had lunch at the plaza in um we've had a treat we've, we've introduced them to churros now it's now dark where do you what's the first thing you want to do when the sun goes down and you want to show them how great disneyland looks at night where do you go uh liz will be here on saturday yes we're not going anywhere near dca <laughs> on our first day no we will not I don't think I would do Big Thunder or Splash at night. Tomorrowland, you know what? Save Tomorrowland, there you go. We haven't gone to Tomorrowland yet. We'll save, tomorrow's a whole day, oh boy. That's how you initiate somebody to, to Disneyland or Tomorrowland is you do it at night. That's the best way to see Tomorrowland. I would agree with that. Save Tomorrowland for the sun to go down, walk through there, hear the sounds, maybe ride, I don't know, do one or two rides, uh, probably Space Mountain, get yourself a late fast pass for that. Nathan7478 gets with five bucks. Says, are you surprised at all the construction walls right before the holidays, especially Main Street? No, not at all. Uh, the holidays are reefer season. So uh, construction during this, this part of the year is not at all surprising to me. Uh, adventure and tea torches. Yeah, that's not bad. I like Tomorrowland, though. I really do. I like Tomorrowland at night. Uh, that's, that's the perfect way to... Oh, you got pictures, Dan? He says, I'll send you pictures from the Skyliner, views of the icons to list so you can see them. Yeah, do that. That'll be great. Uh, Lady Sky asked, do you think once Avengers Campus is open, Disneyland won't be as bad as DCA? No, I don't. Disneyland will always win. Look, here's what, look at, 
People are saying Galaxy's Edge is not as busy as it should be, which is true. It probably isn't, although it often is. But they're still coming to the park. They're still going to Disneyland. Disneyland will never be, will never not be the place to be when you're at the resort. It will always be the main attraction. Avengers Campus, Galaxy's Edge, they will never outperform Disneyland proper. Eric Van Den Ordel gets with two bucks. Perfect day would be a drizzly Thursday. <laughs> you know, I agree, Mike. Uh, monorail at night is pretty great. Can't argue with that. So you get a fast pass for Space Mountain, get off Space Mountain, get on the monorail, take a lap. And then, and now it's, it's getting close to night. Do you make somebody watch the fireworks on the first day? I think, yeah, absolutely, right? You definitely do fireworks on the first day. That is something that gets embedded to you for life. That becomes a part of your Disney heartbeat is fireworks over the castle. So which means, you guys, which means that you have to take somebody on their first day on a day that they're going to have fireworks, which means not a weeknight. Uh, you don't even have to like fireworks, Nick. I don't think. Disney and fireworks are a different animal. They really are. Uh, they're not like regular fireworks. And there's something emotional that happens to somebody when they watch a Disneyland fireworks show. So I would, I would argue that you don't even have to like fireworks to enjoy Disneyland fireworks. Because I'm not a firework guy, generally. Fourth of July doesn't do much for me. Uh, you know, just seeing fireworks, I mean, they're kind of neat, I guess. But I don't go out of my way to see fireworks. But I do, I do enjoy them Disneyland quite a bit. Okay, so uh, where was I? We got a $5 gift from Elliot Adams who said, Walt Disney World first time park order, Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, Epcot, last because of construction. I would go Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Animal Kingdom, then Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios is the least Disney thing that I think anybody could do. But I'm not a fan. Some people love it. And for them. But I'm just not a fan. I, I think Epcot, I think actually Epcot is the most Disney World thing that you can do. Uh, at least it used to be. I don't know how it's going to be, you know, today or as the construction is happening. But to me, I feel like the people who are, who love Disney World the most love Epcot first. Am I wrong? That's just the vibe I get. Uh, I, I know that's torn up. Yeah, I, it's, it's rough. It's, that's why it's kind of hard to, you know, talk about this stuff in a vacuum. But um, buy Disney balloon. That makes people happy. It does. Be Disney is not wrong about that. Buying balloons makes you happy. All right. 12 minutes to go, guys. Be sure to like this video. Sh like crowd tonight. I wonder what's happening. Is it the topic? I wonder if it's the topic. People like rumors. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, thank you, Alyssa, for saying that. I, I, no matter what, love comes first, Alyssa. No matter what, no matter what, love comes first. Love everyone. Love everyone. There's nothing wrong. It doesn't cost you anything. There's no shame in choosing love first instead of hate. Have you ever considered a Disney cruise? Yes, I have. Uh, I'm not a big cruise guy, but uh, I've only been on one in my life, but I would go on one, sure. Next construction update, Monday, this coming Monday. We didn't go to the park this last, or we didn't go to the park during on Saturday uh, because we were in Palm Springs. So I didn't get the chance to get any, uh, to get any um, construction footage. Yeah, Orlando, I would agree. <laughs> I like this topic, but apparently <laughs> but apparently not everybody did, which is interesting. Uh, all right. Dinner, okay, let's, yeah, we got, you know, we get, the clock is ticking. We got to finish this trip. Where do we have dinner on our first day at Disneyland? If we're having lunch at the Golden Horseshoe, and one of my thoughts was to have lunch at the plaza, do we take them to dinner at the plaza for some chicken? 
What's a good night restaurant? Wow. That's a good question. Rancho is beautiful at night. It really is. Uh, Rancho is really, you know what? Carnation Cafe. I like that. I like that because it's well lit. Carnation Cafe has a lot of popcorn lights. Main Street at night is so, the, amb the ambiance on Main Street at night is fantastic. Getting to, you have to sit outside, ask for a table outside. No doubt about that. Uh, so yeah, I think I would go with that. I, I like that. I like Carnation Cafe for dinner at night, but you got to book a reservation. So don't, don't forget that. Uh, yeah, you know what? It's hard to pass on that fried chicken though, Ken. I agree. Uh, and Blue Bayou is great, but that's one of the things I talked about. I would say Blue Bayou for like your fourth trip. Uh, I love Blue Bayou, but I wouldn't spring that on somebody on the first day. It just kind of gets overwhelming. Tropical Highway. Tropical Highway is not a bad place to go. I'm just not thrilled with the food. They don't serve enough food, like dinner food. It's, you know, the, the, the bow is, uh, I don't like the bow. I'm not a big fan of, of uh, about so uh, I don't know it's not my thing just bring food what what oh I see bring bagel bar I thought you meant bring food from outside I'm like what are you talking about <laughs> no I would do that a lot I'd take my bagel barbecue over to tropical hideaway for sure uh, tropical hideaway is good for a snack right it's not a place for dinner you don't have dinner at tropical hideaway yeah pizza planet that's just wrong, Ralston. That's just mean. <laughs> you don't take somebody to Pizza Planet on their first day at Disneyland. They might never come back. <sighs> Bagel barbecue for me is a meal. That is a meal for me. Uh, definitely. Yeah, Tropical Hideaway at night is pretty great. Um, I've never had, I've never not had a good time at Tropical Hideaway. I'll say that. Even though I don't like the food, I love the setting. I love the setting of Bengal or I mean, of Tropical Hideaway to the point where, you know, it makes up for any shortcomings that might have um, in terms of the menu. I'll, <laughs> you guys remember that one time we did a live stream, Tropical Hideaway, and I forgot to pay for my food? <laughs> oh, that was funny. Uh, Stephen Crawford gets us a two bucks. He says, 32 days till Disney Plus. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I'm so looking forward to that. Yeah, no, I, uh, <laughs> Angelica says, I did. it was because they, the way the tropical hideaway is set up, you can get, you, you can get a, there's two lines. There's a line for Dole Whips and then there's a line for food. And it's very easy to just get your Dole Whip and then leave it. Cause it's like a separate line and you forget, you don't realize that you have to get back in line to pay for food. Because it, it doesn't filter you. You can just walk right out of there with your food easily. Easily. And so I went all the way. I sat down, sat in my chair, started doing a live stream. And I tell people in the comments, like, hey, he didn't pay for his food. And I had to walk. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I walked back to the lady. I'm like, I, I didn't pay for my food. <laughs> and she laughed at me because she said it happens a lot. Uh, so that was funny. The Dole Whip stand is still open, yes. And it's, the Dole Whip stand by the Tiki Room also has a, a mobile order. Were you impressed with the food at Galaxy's Edge other than Ronto's? Yeah, I think all the food at, at Galaxy's Edge was good. I know, I want a Dole Whip now too. <laughs> uh, are you excited to see the live action Lady and Tramp? No, I'm not. Sorry. Uh, Nate Dog says he's never eaten at Bengal Barbecue? What? Well, you don't get to go that often, do you, Nate? Yeah, uh, definitely uh, go to Bengal Barbecue when you, when you go next, Nate. I highly recommend it. I got the three-year subscription. I'm ready to go. I cannot wait to not have to buy. Well, I stopped buying DVDs or Blu-rays. just in, But I've, there's so many movies that I got to catch up on now uh, because I haven't been buying the Blu-rays. <laughs> or, you know, like I've been over the live-action remakes and I'm kind of over this and over that. So, um, so, here's one. Yeah, do you agree that the live-action Mulan will not be very bad? I don't know. We don't know anything. We've seen one trailer. I, I, I think it's, I think it's, there have been, you know, that kind of got me upset. Twitter got me upset about Mulan and the live-action. People were all 
the outrage mob once again strikes on the Mulan live action. People are outraged. They don't know. We saw 90 seconds of the movie, and there's this, that, and the other uh, about what it has or doesn't have. You don't know anything. We don't know anything about this movie other than the 90 seconds they've shown us. We know who's in it, and that's it. Uh, we don't even know that. We don't even know that Mushu is in it. And the reason why I say that is, and maybe we do, I don't know. But you can't, you can't assume that from the trailer. The original Mulan trailer had made no reference to, to Mushu. And no reference that the movie was in any way funny. It was a very serious, very dramatic trailer, just like the live-action Mulan trailer. Matter of fact, they parallel in a lot of ways, the two trailers. Uh, so we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what they're going to have. They might have Mushu in there. They could be messing with all of us. They could be just messing with us. Right? I don't know. I just feel like people are so quick to judge. So quick to judge. And that's Twitter for you. Get to Twitter just lets you react immediately to a thing without ever really getting to know a topic. You just react and then you move on to the next thing. Uh, Alex Wood, or Alexa Wood, I'm sorry, says, uh, I feel like a live-action Pocahontas would be amazing. I, I mean, yeah, if you're into that, I'm kind of over the... I would like to see Disney make a new movie. Make a, make a movie I haven't seen before. Can you do that? <laughs> Can we do that? <laughs> Can we make a movie I haven't seen before? <laughs> Try that. Yeah, here's uh, Alyssa says, exactly, I feel the same about the Jungle Cruise. We really have no actual trailers. We haven't, we haven't even seen a teaser for that. I see people talking about it all the time, but I have no idea where they are getting their info. Uh, set photos. There's nothing. Yeah, no, that's the one thing. Mushu may not be on IMDb, so maybe that is a thing. All I'm saying is we can't, we don't know, we can't know a thing about a movie based simply on a trailer. That's all. And it could be that the, the Mushu's, uh, I bet you they reference it. Maybe, not, he's, maybe he's not a key character, but maybe there's a Mushu reference in there. Maybe a small appearance. Who knows? Maybe even by Eddie Murphy. You never know. Uh, and they just don't credit it. Uh, the Dragon movie. Yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to that. You know, made a promise. As soon as, as, soon as Pete Doctor uh, took, over, took over Pixar, he said, we're going to stop doing sequels. <laughs> Thank you for that. Having said that, what about a live-action Toy Story? <laughs> Would you have a first-timer meet the Fab Five first or Princesses first? Uh, I, I don't know if I would even do, like, maybe one. One of them. I don't know. Yeah, don't forget to hit the like button on your way out, guys. All right, yeah, live action Pixar. How about that? You know what would be great is if, like, uh, they did a. I think we, I think we did this bit once before. Take Maleficent, which was like the first live action remake, although it was a sequel. No, not a sequel. It was a live. It was a remake, I guess. That they made an animated version of Maleficent, a hand drawn animation version of Maleficent. I think the world would explode. I think that's the. I think that's the first sign of the apocalypse, is if they do a live action hand drawn Maleficent remake. I'm mean, sorry, not live action, but an animated, a hand-drawn animated remake of Maleficent. World explode. There's a rumor about Beast having a movie that's based off the book. Really? That's weird. All right. Well, I guess we're here. Gosh, it's already it's already eight o'clock, isn't it? Peter Pan. Okay. So there we go. Before we go. We've had dinner. What's the last ride of the night? Somebody just said, end with Peter Pan. I can't disagree with that. You've been, you've watched the fireworks. Big, Big Daddy Joe, where you been? I haven't seen you in forever. Uh, what's your last ride? We haven't been on Pirates yet. We haven't been on Hell Mansion, so I think we got to fit that. If you haven't already, I think Pirates is a great way to finish initially. I think that's a great, that's a great, like, exclamation point on a Disney, on our first Disneyland day. Because, it all leads up to that. And then you can say, and by the way, before we go, here. Here's the best ride ever made. Pirates of the Caribbean. Right? Right? That, 
it doesn't get any better than that. I think I like that. Good day. Good day, guys. All right. Well, that's it for tonight, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. I do appreciate you all joining us. It means a lot that you're here and you spent this hour with us. Uh, and, of course, for your generosity, as always, we very much appreciate that. As we mentioned last week, you have no idea how important uh, that kind of thing is. The, 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 the donations that we do here on the live stream, uh, the, the kindness that you show to us on Patreon, we don't operate without that support. And um, it means everything to me. It makes it possible to do this show, especially, uh, as we said, in this uh environment, this YouTube economy that we're in right now, it is very hard to get along. Crystal, love you. Uh, so thank you guys very much. And if you don't, if you're not able to do that, you can support Fresh Baked by sharing these videos with your friends, uh, sharing them on social media. You can support Fresh Baked by watching the entire video from beginning to end, the whole thing. Uh, you can support us by uh, liking and commenting on all the videos and um, and just, you know, enjoying everything. And we appreciate that very, very much. So thank you for that. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Pin Drop for the $2 gift of the diaper fund. We are going to need that. Thank you very much. We love you guys. We'll see you next time. Respect. Bye guys. Love you.